So the tornado came just right straight that way. Yeah, looking straight through that way. When the, the sky began to turn, and uh, but right before you, the, we saw the funnel, everything got eerily still. It's weird. I mean, still. Yeah. And we looked at each other and went, oh, that don't feel right. Think back to the day after, a day or so after the 2011 tornadoes. When it was over with, immediately people started streaming in. People, it was, it was bloody and stuff like that. People were crying. It was horrible. Yeah. I mean, I've only seen stuff like that on movies. Uh, we had we lost two of our members, uh, a deacon of ours. He uh, he lost his wife and his mother-in-law. That day. That was a horrible day. As you see the video, think back on that day. What are some of the things that were going through your mind just then? A lot of the sights and the smells were coming back. The best I remember, our church facilities, it was the first place used to bring people because it was the only building left standing when, I mean, immediately after the workers, the relief workers started showing up. And uh, it was chaos. Um, your church became a place of hope right away, a That's place right. where people were coming to, to bring uh, supplies for other people, but a place where people were getting supplies and triaging. We were able to pray for a lot of people during that time, and a lot of people prayed to receive the Lord during that time. Yeah. And um, it's, you know, when things like that happen, it's always an opportunity. Because people, when they're down at the lowest, that's where they really see their mortality and that's when they really know that they need a higher power. Tell me a couple things, a couple ways you've grown as a pastor in those five years because of the storm. Okay, the biggest is um, delegation. When this happened, and like, all of the weight, the pressure, I felt, I mean, it, well, it did, it dropped right on my shoulders. And it took, it took me a while to, it, it took me a while to understand, that, you know what, I can't do all this by myself, I have to delegate. To finally, I gathered a lot of our men together and I said, you take care of this, you take care of this, you take care of this, because this is the biggest thing I've ever had to be over in my life. You know, you run on adrenaline after something like this. Sure. Well, finally, the adrenaline runs out. Your tank runs low, and your body will physically shut down. And do you, I came to that point. Do you remember what that was like? Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. With all of the thoughts and the memories and all of the pressure, um, I mean, pressure. Yeah. To try to... You know, I had a lot of help with our men that were here. We organized the best we could, but, you know, I just felt like this. I felt like 10,000 tons dropped on me all at one time. Mentally, emotionally, it did. And I didn't know how to handle it. I had a, uh, and I don't even remember his name, but this one pastor from Florida came up to me and he put his hand on my shoulder. He said, Brother Tim, I've been through this before. He said, you're just gonna have to be strong. He said, you gotta pull yourself out of this. He said, you got a job to do. He said, we're all here to help you. You know, and just knowing that you had people who really cared to come along beside of you and say, we're gonna hold your hand and we're gonna walk you all the way through this. And immediately after the storm, a blanket of chaplains from Alabama Baptist Convention, from the Florida Baptist Convention. I mean, they were everywhere. And they helped us so much dealing with people's spiritual, emotional, and mental needs. Uh, Brother Lance stayed in constant contact with, with, with me and, and a couple of other pastors in the area too that lost their congregation, their church building. Uh, they were 
continually checking on us to see if there's anything else we needed. How valuable is it to have those connections ahead of time? It's priceless. You had other churches, their pastors, their, their congregations, they, our association itself, they came from all the surrounding, all the associations here in our state. And, and, and even from other, like Kentucky, North Oklahoma, Carolina. Oklahoma Chainsaw. Yes. Man, that helped us out a whole lot. Because we, we couldn't have done it all by ourselves. Don't take for granted your wife. She carried a part of this that, that I couldn't carry. She helped me with a load. You don't know what's going to happen to you tomorrow or to your congregation or to your town the next day. But I, what I would say for every single pastor is you make sure that you are in love with the Word of God, that you are in love with Him, and that you are deeply in love with His presence. If you'll get that settled, it'll be a whole lot easier to handle. It won't make it, it it'll be hard. It'll make it a whole lot easier to handle. Well, all right, anything else you want to add? Yeah, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. He's how you make it.